I had so much fun yesterday taking apart that uh, old drone that was that had been crashed from God knows how high. But I got another teardown today. This one I've been kind of sitting on for a while. I keep meaning to do it. Today I'm going to get to it. Only because I'm procrastinating doing other work. So this time I'm going to tear down a hard drive that doesn't work and see if we can figure out why it doesn't work. Today I think we're going to be doing another teardown video because I've got this little hard drive here that uh, is not seen to be recognized by the computer. And it says FUBAR on it because, well, it was given to me and I was told that it was no good. And always before completely destroying these things and throwing them out, I want to see whether it actually is, in fact, FUBAR or not. And then we're going to take it apart. So I'll just turn that off and back on and see if it'll find anything. Okay, it's not finding anything there. The next thing I can do is I can try it inside the, the computer itself. I have a a dockable drive here that I can take out. I can take this other drive. I can try plugging this drive into here. And we'll see whether it will be detected. That's one of the reasons I'm keeping this computer is because of this, uh, this removable drive. They just don't do that anymore. Now you're expected to carry a portable hard drive with a cable if you want to back up files or transfer any files over. This was so much more convenient, especially when traveling, only to carry one thing. This drive is FUBAR. Okay, if I take this drive and put it into the drive bay, this is the drive that was inside the computer. Oops, might help if I... Where's the power button? Power. There, you see? So with this, with this drive plugged in, I couldn't even find that drive, but there's the external. Right? I've got lots of files on here. This is stuff that I recorded over the years. Back, backup copies of stuff. So that drive works, and it works when it's installed in here, but this drive here doesn't work. Either way, you put it over here, nothing happens. It beeps like it's going to find the drive, but the drive itself is just shot which is what I wanted to verify before I take it apart. And we're going to take it apart on this video. We're going to tear this, tear this little drive down and see what's in it. So I just wanted to verify on camera that this drive is in fact FUBAR. It's either the platters themselves or maybe a head crash or who knows where the problem is on it. But um, it definitely has a problem. Put my other drive back in here and it will fire up right away. show up as my my secondary internal drive okay so we know this has got a problem this drive let me get rid of the laptop and uh, we're gonna tear this drive down and uh, see what's see what's wrong see whether it's not spinning or whether it's a bad head or it's probably electronics but who knows it doesn't work it's shot that's why it was given to me that's why it says foobar on it because somebody else already tested it and said it was no good. But I always like to test things myself before I tear them apart beyond repair. It's been a long time since I've taken apart a hard drive. Made in the Philippines. So sometimes they hide screws under the label. I don't know if that's the case on this one, but we're going to remove it just in case because quite often they hide a screw under there.
But in this case, no. But I bet you there's a screw under this, under these seals. Well, that was a vent hole. And that's also a vent hole that's plot blocked. <laughs> that one being blocked, that's a breather hole. Uh, these are little torques. So let me just get out my bits, my bits and pieces here and find a small Torx. And we'll open this one up. Use these secure bits that I've got. And it's a, a tiny Torx. That one right there will do. Okay, need a, a handle. I'll just grab the powered one that went with this, this set. I don't, even though it's not charged, because I've yet to bother plugging it in. I probably should. I'll just use it as a regular driver just to remove the screws. Now, I would not recommend opening up a working hard drive under any circumstances because these were put together in clean room. This is definitely not a clean room. But this one here is totally non-functional, so... And there's nothing on there that's of any value. To nobody. There's no personal data on this drive whatsoever. Uh, probably some TV shows came out of an old uh, PVR that was uh, recycled, but the drive was bad. Or at least the person that gave it to me, that's where they said it came out of. Okay, it should just, um, I guess it, well, it should take the screws out on the bottom. I probably don't need to, but we'll remove the screws on the bottom too. These ones are just Phillips, just to remove the board, just for something to do. This has probably only got one platter in it, I think. It's, I mean, it might have two, but it may only be a single platter. And there is the, um, the circuit board here. There's a good chance that the failure is on this. I didn't hear the drive attempt. I heard it spin, but I didn't hear it attempt to unpark the heads or anything. So it could be a physical problem, but it could be a, a problem on this board. There's the pins that connect the circuit board to, to the drive, electronics, the head, and so forth. And the motor motor contacts are over here. That's for the motor driver, that's right there. So these contacts are just for the read-write head and the uh, positioning of it. Okay, this should, should, should pop apart. Lights, camera, action. Let's uh, see what goodies are revealed. Well, that's the vent hole there. That says do not cover. Ready for the big reveal? It'll open. There we go. There's the inside. Oh, there's two discs in here. Okay. Notice that the platters appear to be not turning as freely as I think they should. Heads are in their parked position. They're pulled away from the platters. There's, there's two platters. It's a double, double sided. Now I can remove these platters. I can remove all of this. Actually, we'll just uh, get the the bit back again. The, the Torx bit, and uh, start removing other screws and see what falls off. So that's the the, the platters. 
this is the park for the head and this is the interface here for the this is where the interface plugs in that controls the voice coil over here for the uh, for the head it's a linear type motor remove some more screws Be some nice strong magnets on this unit. Hard drive generally have some pretty strong magnets there in the voice coil. And there's one more screw on the bottom here I need to take out. And now the, the head assembly should lift right out. This whole assembly should just, oh, there's another couple of screws. I see there's two more. This whole assembly should lift out. Gotta get the magnets out first. There's some pretty strong magnets in this thing. The magnets are almost worth keeping because they can be used for things like magnetizing your, your tools. And yet, they didn't magnetize my tools. That's interesting. These might not be magnetic screws. Well, they are. Interesting. Why did my screwdriver not magnetize? Oh well. There's the voice coil there. We can lift this out now. You can see the circuitry there that uh, goes to the voice coil and the read write heads. There are four heads here because there are two platters. I'll get a close up of this stuff. And of course, the bottom magnet. And if these two magnets go together, they are extremely difficult to remove because they are very powerful. These are pretty strong, these little magnets. Great for holding things in place. Attach this to one of your favorite tool and then you can stick it to whatever you want or, or even just attach it, attach it to a board and you can stick your tools to them and your tools will remain there because this is nothing's gonna drop off this. These are that strong, these little magnets. Okay, let's take a look at the head assembly. So these are the read write heads. These are pressed up against the, the disc. I'm just bending them so you can get a better look at the actual the actual head itself. That's the read right head there. There's another one here. So there's four of them. Two for the bottom platter, two for the top platter. This is what they call the voice coil. Now, why they call it that? Because you know, you know we think of that as inside a speaker, but it performs the same function. It's given a an electrical signal, produces a magnetic signal to either move the arm one way or the other to position the head. There's a bearing in the middle here. Next is the platter itself, which will also remove the platter.
There's platter number one, a spacer, and platter number two, and another spacer. And these are actually made out of glass, believe it or not. They look metal because they've basically got a sputtered um, coating on them, but if I were to snap this, this thing would shatter into a gazillion little pieces. I know because I've done it before. I broke one. Should I break another one? Just to show you guys what happens. And I'll have the mess to clean up. So I have a feeling what happened on this hard drive is the motor itself is shot because that should spin when I turn it. That should spin freely and it doesn't. Right? Even like when the platters were on there, I thought they I thought they didn't spin very well. They slowed down pretty quick. Now normally when you turn off a hard drive, what happens is when the power shuts off on the hard drive, the motor acts as a brake. It, the the uh, windings, the electronics make the motor turn into a generator, which is used to park the heads. But under no load, nothing connected, this thing should be spinning freely, and it's not. And that, I think, is the problem of what happened on this poor old hard drive. It, it just got used to the point where it wore out, the bearings wore out, because you would expect that that would spin. Like this is not turning easy. This should spin freely. And it's not. So that only leaves one thing, the motor. The motor itself, the bearings in the motor wore out. And that's why this drive wasn't working. It couldn't get up to speed. It, you'd hear it try to start up, but it wouldn't get up to the right speed for reading the data. And it would just sit there waiting, 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 waiting for the speed to be correct. Okay, uh, if, I, if I bend one of these things, they're going to snap because they're glass. I'm just curious as to whether I should do it or not. Or I should just keep them, keep them as they are. Scratch them. You can see it scratch the surface off them. I'm going to get some safety glasses on before I do this because I know... I know what's going to happen. There's going to be shards of glass that go everywhere when this thing shatters. Okay, I'm going to just um, pile a little bit of tension on here. I've got safety glasses on. Where'd it go? Uh, on second thoughts, that probably wasn't a smart thing to do. Now I've got little shards of glass all over the place. Because uh, this thing, as you saw, I didn't, I wasn't looking at it. I was, I had the safety glasses on, but I was looking the other way. So I didn't even see what happened. I just heard all the pieces go everywhere. Okay, I guess it's time to clean up this mess and uh, move on. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, disastrous video. I'll keep the magnets. They might be useful. Everything else in the bin it goes.